Hello, friends. Today I'm going to make some, um, using my plaster here. If you don't have plaster or you don't uh, want to pick up plaster, you can make your own paper mache. Use that with uh, newspaper, flyers, and then half glue, half water kind of mixture. Maybe a little more glue than water. I would say like, um, yeah, maybe three quarters glue and um, a quarter water, like a little more glue than water to make it a little more um, thick. And then if you don't want to use plaster, I have plaster here. And this is the wrapped kind, which is really cool. So I wanted to make some unique canvases, and you can do this with your paper mache. So I cut out these cardboard boxes or cardboard sides from boxes to make a little series of canvases uh, with the um, plaster or paper mache whatever you want to choose to use. So I have my water here and I'm just going to make the plaster backs which will be my canvases um, for a kind of rough unique looking canvas and so that's so what I'm going to do. For this part I am going to cut my pieces to the length a little bit more so I can wrap it around um, to the, the canvas if you're using plaster. You can pick it up at Michael's. Um, it's about $8 a roll. Um, I think the roll, it, I'm not sure how close the roll is the same as this, but the ones that they have there. So I'm going to cut them like this. And I'm not sure how many layers I'm going to do. So anyways, I'm going to wet this in the water. And if you guys do um, paper mache, then you're doing almost the same thing, but wetting in the glue. And then I just squeeze the water out like you would be squeezing the glue out. And throwing it on. It doesn't matter how smooth or rough it is. I mean, you would want it to be able to do something over it after, but it's not too bad. You don't need it too thick for this project. Can you turn on that light, please? Thank you. I have Sherry and, and Jackson right here. I just scooched over my camera to say, hi, Jackson. Hi, Robert. Hi. Say hi, Grandma. Grandma's crafting. Yeah, Grandma's crafting. That's my grandson, Jackson. Yeah. Say bye. Okay, so that was a little distraction. Squirrel. Uh. Yeah. And basically this is it for this part. So I'm going to do all three or four, however many cards I have here, and do the same thing. And try to smooth them out and make them look really canvassy. Just like this. So I'm going to get this around in the back and then I'm going to be back after all of them are done. Okay. I have them done here and now they're drying and I'm going to heat help them. And I only got one layer on them so far. I'm not sure if I'm going to do more. I've done other things with more layers, but I don't think it needs it. And if I do, I'm just going to put chunky layers everywhere just for the look of it. So here's the ones, four of them that I have. So I'm going to dry them up and, and then add to them and show you guys what I'm kind of up to. Okay. They are, excuse me, just had a little bit to eat here. Um, they are pretty much dry. And the back, I think I'll put some uh, felt on the back or whatever. And this is the little mini cool rustic type of canvas that we have now. So I have a few ideas. Can you guys see that? I hope so. I have a few ideas for it. So for one idea, I'm going to use a stencil. I'm thinking I'm going to use this Andy Skinner stencil. And I'm going to use this stencil I got in my birthday happy mail. And I might use this Andy Skinner stencil as well with the little umbrella. Um, and 
if I use any other things, I'm not sure too. Like it, de it really depends. So another thing I'm going to use, I'm going to give it a try, is I'm going to use these soft pastels, <clears throat> and they are the Artist Loft Fundamentals soft pastels. So I'm going to give them a try for this um, particular interesting weird canvas thing that I made. So we'll see if this uh, the chalk pastels or the uh, soft pastels work on this. It's kind of um, on a whim. I want to give it a try. I haven't opened this one yet, but it has the stencils here like this. Let's see how it looks. This is the stencil and these are the masks and I'm going to use a mask for this particular one. So let's see if I could just pop them out. I don't think so without getting... Oh, I got a lot of glue on my scissors here. So I just want to be very careful. I don't want to wreck them. Very delicate. No, they're actually really sturdy. Uh, some brands are more delicate than others. I find that the... These ones are fairly sturdy so far. I'm just going to cut these out. And I'm going to give it a try with a makeup brush or makeup applicator. Let's see how that works. First of all, the uh, sponge applicator. I don't want to make like a whole dark color. There we go. Excuse me, what do you want to make? An impression of dark around them so let's see I should probably I'm gonna go with navy and I'm just gonna try I'm I'm kind of going I'm never I've never tried it I'm kind of just uh, want to see I don't know I'm just kind of going with it it might not work with this I'm just gonna grab the corner of it and just go along the edges it might not work. I do have a few others if this plan doesn't work. I want it to be kind of light and messy and smudgy and I really don't want to move my Trying to hold my feet down, my feet. I'm trying to hold the legs down really well here on this girl. Just something different. I wanted to try something different. So if it works, it's great. So it's like, hmm. I just want to try my soft pasta. That's all. We know it works with sprays. We know we've done other projects with, you know. Uh, let's try doing things that we don't normally do and see how we can make it work for us. I do like the way it's coming about. I might want to not put so much pressure on this, but I don't know. Making a lot of dark lines that are pretty in here. So, let's go around here, just kind of sketching. I'm not trying to push too hard now. And, smudging it up. Yeah, I like it when I do a little less harder on the lines and make it more smudgy. So I'm just going to work that in. And this is the corner of my makeup brush. Makeup sponge. The Dollarama ones. Where's my pack? Um, the Dollarama ones like this here. I got from Dollarama. Pack 24. I'm just going to keep going until I get some of the lines kind of 
maybe not so hard here than I did around her head. Let's look at it like that. Isn't that cool? Can you guys see? Uh, that is my canvas piece so far. So, very cool. So I'm just taking my stiff brush here. This is one of those really cheapy brush. I'm just taking some of the whatever from the sponge or anything like that. And just kind of brushing it away. It's also probably going to make my edges a little softer. Isn't that cute? So very cute. So I'm probably, I was thinking about using, well I might just add some circles here. I was thinking also of using the umbrella, but I'm not sure. Of course, I may use it. I think I'll use it in a little bit of a red tone. I kind of like it this way. We could do it over, but I think it's too crowded. We could do it this way and add the red now. This is kind of a ready orange. So I'm going to flip this and see if I can smear in this color, the soft pastels, just like that. I am going to grab another color here. I think this one is, see it's, I don't know, very close. This one might be just a little darker. And this is fun just to play and it's a unique way to do it different canvas I could push as hard as I want to and I just made my own little canvas let's see I really want to hold it down really firm too so I don't get over the edge I could probably outline it a little bit it's gonna be cute I could have probably maybe flip it over and use this side here to add a little darkness to the umbrella. Who knows? Just kind of playing with it going by ear. I'm just going on, on the corner of it and trying to, and I hope you guys are getting this, uh, corner of my brush and just kind of pulling in some of that maybe. Like that. Adds a little bit more extra color. Grab that brush and get all the whatever's been rubbed off of your sponge because it gets a little rough because this is rough, but it's nice. Isn't it? You guys could paint or do whatever you want to. Um, you could try oil pastels. I thought the chalk soft pastels would get into there a little bit better and be nice. And you could go over it with a brush and get rid of some of the hard, harder edges or whatever you want. I thought it would be really a unique piece to play with. Now I think I'm going to um, probably put a little bit of 
of, uh, I'm going to put my thing back on here. I'm going to do a little bit of a spray on the background, see if I can age it up a bit. I'm going to put that there. I think I'm going to leave the umbrella and not worry about it because I don't have a mask for that. And grab my food coloring spray here. That's the brown. And see what I can do with that. Um, what kind of background? Maybe I'll just do, let's just spray a little bit of of that on there. I just want a touch of antiquing on it. See how that is? But I don't want to like torture it. This is a really nice mister. I got this mister. I had uh, people ask me, where did I get it? I got it from a beauty place and um, it was for like, I don't know, probably for hair or makeup or whatever. So. I decided, before I went to grab the one at Michael's, I decided to go check out the prices of this one, and I got it. So now I just did a little antiquing. Remove the kids. And I saved the white in there, which I wanted to do. The umbrella, it's okay. I'm kind of not too crazy about it. I kind of would have liked it to be more red. I'm going to try to add more color to it. And blend that in with my sponge. Also what would be really nice is if you went to get um, the makeup sponge, like the makeup eye makeup uh, sponges that are like this, but they have the little you can actually probably work with it a little bit better than a, a piece like this. I don't know. So, maybe next time I'm at the beauty part here, I might have to go pick that up and see if I like that better. easier to do it with the uh, stencil so I don't have to worry about being messy about it. There we go. Then you could seal it after guys with like sealer and that kind of thing because the pastel will kind of rub off, right? So, or the soft pastel will want to. There we go. I might just put a little shape into it more like that and make it more look more realistic. So that is one. I'm going to dry it up with it. I am going to ink it up a little bit. Add some ink. I got my archival ink up. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to go with my world map first. That's what my first one I'm going to go with. And I'm just going to randomly I'm gonna get this pad. It's like a, a whole big piece, but I'm gonna get it on there, and it's gonna be really not a precise. But I'm not trying to get it precise. So there, that's cute. Can you see that? The cords in the way. So I'm just, just going to go like that. 
And that is that for that world one. And I'm just going to grab these numbers. Put it at the bottom. And I'll have a cute little piece. Just like that. And so far, I'm liking that. That is how it's looking. Um, I think to touch up a bit, I'm going to add a trim at the bottom. So I have um, this trim here. It looks pretty good. I have some roses here. I have some, um, what's this called? Seam binding? Cotton, I think. And I, I dyed it this color. I could use some of that. In fact, I think that really looks well together. And I could spray the, I could also use some of, I also spray, I can spray these with that, the brown. I think I will use that. And I think I do have more seam binding that is lace right here, but it might be too white. Oh, there's just so many options. I do have this too. can kind of do too. Maybe I will. So I'm going to put a trim at the bottom. I think like this. I think that'd be cute. So I'm going to grab my scissors that cut material. There's just some stain on here so I don't know. I might just add a little staining to that. So this is that trim. This is this trim here. I believe I got it from Victor. I have this one. I might just stain this one a bit here. And I do have some of this, but I think I'm going to use this to add to here with this one. Cut an angle so it's kind of the same as this. I don't know. That's cute. I'm going as I go, guys. I kind of have an idea in mind, and I'm going as I go for this part. I didn't think, I didn't even plan what I'm going to use that for. I thought I was going to do like a heart shape. I might still do a heart on the other ones. I still have three more to do, so... I think these are really cute. I will perhaps just glue in my... Oh, if you hear my stomach, I hope you guys can't hear it, but I think you can. I might just do my hot glue. I haven't used hot glue in so long. I might just use hot glue. I'll have it plugged in anyways, just in case. Um... Would use my rubber cement, which is probably more if I have it more what I'm likely to use. Not rubber cement, sorry, my E6000. So I'm going to spray this just slightly here. See how that goes. So I'm going to have a little bit out of the picture, maybe, guys, but. I should have probably just sprayed a spot and just went like this over it. That might even be too much now. We'll see. I'm going to dry it up. So I'm wet it. I sprayed it, but I'm, I wet it and I'm going to crinkle it up and dry it like this so it gets kind of crinkly. I thought that would be good. A different look of grunge. And I think I'm going to put a little bit, I think I blew a flower away. I think I'm going to put a little bit of um, stenciling this. On, on it as well to add the black. Here. It's not even all the way dry, but it's good enough for me. And I'm going to put it on top of here. And hopefully that will 
help blend it up make it more rugged looking I'm probably going to add like I said I want to add a little bit of Punchinella stenciling there I'm sorry with all the shadows I do have a light over there I should probably have it closer if I have it closer I may not shadow so much I don't know there it's closer might be too close now I'm blinded archival ink will work just like that and I have it nicely stained on this side and let's see how well we can get I'm grabbing my stick here E6000 on this side my glue. So I'm just going to go around along the, the stitched area here. And I do have the heat gun if it doesn't stick right away as a backup. Backup. And I'm just going to do this to the whole trim. It's much easier to stick something in there than just to squeeze all out sometimes. So, got that on the cap a little bit there. So I'm just going to get my edge together with this. You could do a little slits on the top, but I don't care if it's like wrinkled up or not. Because this has got, these ones with the edges are always bowed. skimpy on the glue in the end because I wasn't sure how if it was exactly the same length. There we go. Now I'm going to probably put some nice felt back here. So I'm just going to add my glue. E6000. Awesome stuff. Kind of rough it up and pull the glue down as far as I can. It is all the way through, but I have it a little thicker at the beginning. So I can spread it. The way I want to. Just like that. I don't even care how much is sticking on the edges or anything. I'm just going to pin the back. And that is part one. Isn't that pretty? Well, not part one, but you know what I mean. That part's done. I don't even care if it's even or not. That's all good. All good, just like that. And now, this is how it's coming along, guys. Isn't that cute? And all I have to do is just stick my couple of pieces here. And I'm not even being too thoughtful of it, see? I'm just going to grab my ink shadows. I might have, um, maybe should have changed my mind on the umbrella. I don't know, but I could get used to it. It's kind of there now. So I'm grabbing this with these, whatever these are called, surgical type scissors. And I'm going to, hmm, should I just put a hot, no. I'm just going to put a, a dab of glue and if I need to really stick, I could always add hot glue around it too. It'll be more permanent that way. 
and I wasn't even careful in how I cut these guys because this is so a piece that's supposed to be rugged. So I got that on there and I got glue kind of gooing outside, but that's okay. I put the flowers around it. And I have a couple of these green pieces, but I think I'm missing one. Grab my spray. I'm going to spritz a little spot here. There we go. I'm dabbing my... This is that Wilkins, um, oops, food dye uh, gel. Guys, it's working great for me. Wilton's, I think. Wilkins. Wiltons. I'm really loving it. So I'm probably just going to throw in this right here. And if I need any hot glue, I can add it. And so far, I'm doing good. I might just add a little hot glue to the bottom of this so I have both hot glue. Ooh. Oh, this has been sitting for a while upside down. Both hot glue and... Oh, messy. I'm not happy with that. How that's just pouring out. Okay. If you notice, that just totally poured, poured out. That totally... Not happy. Okay. In fact, this is not even where I wanted this piece right here. I rushed it because I panic. One more. Like this. Now that's going to have to dry when you get it off there. That just totally randomly spilt on there. Well, I got the um, E6000 underneath there, too. And I got a big blob of glue, but that's okay. That just totally ripped right out of there. Not cool. So this is pretty much done. I do have to put a hanger on it um, and put felt in the back. Um, I might just put either a little you know, piece of wire. I'm just going to add a little bit of um, more visual texture. I might add a little piece of wire or I'm just going to do ribbon, which both will be perfectly fine. And then I'm going to have the um, felt on top of it so then it doesn't scratch the wall because I was going to do the whole thing but I thought well it's just a little rough so it might scratch the wall don't know and I'll be saving on plaster anyways so I'm just kind of adding more here so I thought we'd save on the plaster anyways if I did it like that and now I'm just adding a little more visual texture and this is one complete piece. The other one, I want to do something totally different on it. Uh, perhaps a heart, a little quote. I could put still a quote here and um, probably will. And that is it. I am going to do a quick quote after all. So I'm just going to stamp it out onto tissue paper. It's going to be archival ink here. And I am just going to get that all good. I might have to do one or two. I'm not going to do it on backing. There we go. Perfect. And I'm just going to put it right there. So I'm going to cut it out. I'm actually going to try to tear it as much as I can to get closer to it. I find that if you tear it, it kind of looks more natural when you mod podge it on. Then I'm just going to put a, I'm not going to mod podge the whole thing, and I'm just going to put a quote, or a, a 
matte finish, I think, on it. So I'm just kind of ripping it. It does make a big difference on the alt, the how it looks when you glue it on. Seriously, to me, it does. So I'm gonna grab my glue, my Mod Podge, and it's matte medium Mod Podge as well. I'm just going to do that, and then I don't want to Mod Podge the whole thing. I I could. I don't know if I want to. So this quote it says the enjoy the little things in life for one day you'll look back and realize they are they were big. So thought that was a cute quote. And you'll see how when you do this it just melts into the background. The quote well, see how that paper just kind of blends into the background. Do a little test if you want on the edge. See how you like the Mod Podge. Oh, maybe I will do the Mod Podge over it. I always have a few more to do. It, it, you never know, right, until you give it a try. It does smear a bit. Not for the ink, but for the pastel. I could still seal it with... Um, or leave it like this. Maybe I don't even need to finish, seal it with my acrylic sealer. Is that acrylic? Yes. I'm just going to go around first and then carefully go over. I'm going to put a little bit on my roses so they look a little bit porcelain. I like that look. I do. Now I'm just going to go not go over too many times. This wire is getting in my, in my way here quite a bit. Yeah, it's not too bad. Well, I did manage to seal it with something else. So, shadow. This is uh, my plaster canvas. You guys can do the same thing with paper mache, and you don't need. To, this is one layer of plaster. You can do one layer of paper mache. It just gives you a nice rough background. And then I would just sew the paper mache or the paper to get a nice white background. So this is it. This is my canvas. Again, hope you guys like it. Don't forget to craft like a duck. And
bye guys